this video, I'm going to help you understand the difference between multi-agent and MCP and how they work inside of Copilot Studio. So let's first understand what we mean by multi-agent or multi-agent orchestration. This is where I'm going to have different agents uh, that are available to be able to be brought into another agent. So you can almost think of it sort of as a parent-child relationship, but it doesn't have to necessarily be thought of in this way. It's just that one agent understands the capabilities of another agent and being able to orchestrate to the right place to be able to fulfill the request that the user is asking for within the agent implementation that you're dealing with. And so this really offers an opportunity for you to be able to start thinking about different architectures that will allow you to be able to build fully functional agents that stand on their own, but can also be used by other agents uh, as well or even containerization of different capabilities within an agent itself. And we'll go into more details of that. So let's start with the way the orchestrator works inside of Copilot Studio today, where you have different topics or different pieces of knowledge, or you have different tools. And those different tools could be a connector or an MCP server or flows or prompts, all these different things that are available as tools that can be orchestrated or different topics or knowledge allowing me to figure out how to service the user's request. Now, with these new additions, we get the ability to now be able to add agent capabilities to our orchestration. Now, when I talk about this, think of it that this is inside of your actual solution or your Copilot Studio agent. You're making these sub-agent capabilities that are inside of it. Now, why would we potentially do that? It, think of it as I want to group things together or I want to be able to containerize this particular piece of it. And so I have this ability to build an agent inside of my existing agent so that I can kind of group things together. So I can say, hey, these are all HR related or these are all IT related and things of that nature within the agent itself. So it doesn't need to be necessarily its own separate agent. It can just be containerized inside of your agent as a container agent or an inline agent inside of Copilot Studio. And this is a common place where we would want to group things together. And we'll talk more about that as well. However, there is another option that you can do with multi-agent as well with the orchestrator. And so this other option that we have is something called a connected agent. And a connected agent is going to be an agent that stands on its own. It can be created inside a Copilot Studio as a standalone agent. It could be an M365 agent that's built with the SDK. You can also, in the future, we're going to see Azure Foundry. I've built something inside of Azure Foundry as an agent. I just want to connect it in. And the same thing for Fabric Data Agents. So these are all built on Microsoft technology, and they're going to work together to be able to be connected in. So think of it that they're not part of the solution. They stand on their own. They're an their own external endpoint, but now we have the ability to be able to pull these all in. Now, the value proposition of these are going to be that because you've built all these on the Microsoft platform, you don't have to understand how to build an MCP server or any of those type of capabilities, which we will get into MCP in a second, but this will give you the ability to just say, hey, you should know what these things already can do and let's just connect those directly into my agent and add that capability in. Now be aware that that means that the author of that agent is outside of your boundary, outside of your solution. So you need to be aware that if something changes there, it could affect your agent's capabilities and the orchestration thereof. So just be aware of that. So before we get into things outside of Microsoft, just to kind of summarize this over, when you're talking about multi-agent, you really have these two different options. You have what's called a focused agent or an inline agent, and you're going to see this when you have a single developer or 
uh, you're trying to build containerization or logically group tools together so that you can be clearer about how to use those things in conjunction with one another. And it also gives you the ability to separate configuration settings and things of that nature so that you can explain and say, this is how I would like you to behave. And when you're doing these type of things. And then you have that it's not really intended when you do this for you to publish it externally. It's not gonna stand on its own. That's what a connected agent is. So connected agents are gonna be more where I have multiple teams building standalone independent agents that are completely standing on their own. So that way they can use this over and over, but we can now integrate those together and have them work together. Now you'll need to continue to publish and do updates. So just because you publish your agent doesn't mean that you've published the changes to the connected agent. So these are two completely different distribution mechanisms and they have to go through their own DevOps process. They aren't the same agent or the same solution. And the other thing is, is that those are going to have their own authentication configuration that you're going to have to deal with. It is truly an integration to two different applications. It's not just a container like the others, what uh, the connected agent, or I'm sorry, the focused agent or inline agent. You also have to think about how you're going to manage that release cycle and what's going to happen. So when something changes in that connected agent, it can have an effect into your other agent that you connected to it. So just be aware that these are things you need to think about as you plan out your application lifecycle uh, management processes and things of that nature. So some of you are probably going, hey, but wait a minute, not everything is going to be built inside of my Microsoft ecosystem. And I want to be able to connect in third party solutions into my agents and have this sort of multi agent capability in a sense, but on something that's not inside of the Microsoft world, or I just want to connect it using something called model context protocol. Well, model context protocol is an industry standard protocol now that allows us to be able to plug things in to our agents so that we can orchestrate to them and we can understand what are all the capabilities of this downstream implementation. And that means that it can be hosted on different platforms, it can be different technology stacks, it can be whatever you would like, but it does require you to build a model context protocol server. And to do that means that you're going to need to know how to build one of those. And this is going to be much more of a pro developer type of situation for you to be able to go and build one of those. I'll shoot videos that show how to connect all of these things in the how to series. In the education series, I just want you to keep in mind that the model context protocol is just this industry standard way of being able to allow you to connect to these third party systems and be able to know what they do and how to orchestrate them in. So now if we go back to look at the Copilot Studio agent stack and we take a look at where does MCP fit into this whole thing or the model context protocol fit in, you'll see that it fits in inside of tools. So it actually kind of shows up like an action. And it's the same way you can wrap an API or things of that nature, you can wrap an MCP server now and connect to it through basically just like you would a connector or a power automate flow. And that allows us to be able to take these third party agents and connect them in. But keep in mind because of the fact that it is a connection or a connector or a tool, it means it's gonna be inside of that solution. So that means that those connections, just like if you're connecting to an API, sure, those things can be changing outside of your implementation. Just like if an API changed on a RESTful API, you're going to need to make some changes to your connector or your um, connection that's going in to the tool that you're using to connect it inside of your agent. The same situation is going to apply for MCP and MCP servers. You're going to need to update that connector, that connection, all of that information to make sure that you are maintaining how you're going to integrate to that third party system. 
So I hope in a sense this really helps you understand better all these different components that have come out in this whole multi-agent capability that's really exciting inside of Copilot Studio. And if you like videos like this, please like and subscribe to my channel. And as always, if you want to try Copilot Studio, you can do so at aka.ms slash try Copilot Studio.